had an idea with the BBC Microbit to turn it into a pendulum and let it swing backwards and forwards and work out what the, the period is, so the time that it takes to swing backwards and forwards. So when, when you get um, a pendulum like this, so you've got a weight on the end of a piece of string and that anchor point is up there. So this is length L. So you've got a pendulum and it's got a weight pulling down towards the earth. And when it swings backwards and forwards, it always does, it always has the same period. So if we call that T, so it always swings backwards and forwards at the same rate and it always has the same period. So I thought I'd turn the micro bit into the weight at the end and swing it backwards and forwards and get the micro bit to time the swings backwards and forwards. So why would I do this? Why would I work out the, the period of a pendulum swinging backwards and forwards? Well, I thought it'd be fun to measure this here, G. So G is the gravitational constant. It's the amount that the Earth pulls on objects. So um, there's a formula. So the, the period T is equal to 2 pi square root of L over G, where G is a gravitational constant and L is the the length of the pendulum. And I think that's really interesting because it doesn't depend, the period T doesn't depend on the weight of the pendulum at all, only on the, the length. Um, and so we can work out G from this. If, if we rearrange it, we can get G is L times 2 pi over t squared. So if we if we measure t, the period, which we can do with the micro bit, and we have a fixed length L, and um, so I've chosen one meter, so I've, so I've got a one meter piece of card that I'm gonna hang the micro bit from. Uh, so with those two bits of information, I can work out G. And I know because I looked it up on the internet, um, the actual value is 9.81 newtons per kilogram. So that that would be the number that we're looking for. But I'd like to actually do an experiment and find out what G is by uh, by testing it with a micro bit. So this, so this is a long piece of card, a one meter piece of card. You see, I've put a hook at the top here and I've got some sticky pads at the end here. And I'm going to turn that into my pendulum with the, the micro bit at the end. So let me just demonstrate how this works. Uh, I've got my micro bit hanging up here as a pendulum. And if I press the A button, it should say go. So it's now waiting to see uh, if the light level changes. So if I flash the torch at it, you can see that a little plus comes up on the screen every time it sees a bright light. So this is what I'm going to use uh, so that the micro bit can detect that it's going backwards and forwards. So if I, if I swing it for you, you can see that it's counting the number of times it crosses the light beam. And then eventually when we get to the end, it then does a calculation, works out what the, what the period of the um, oscillation was. So now we'll actually do the experiment. So we click button A and the micro bit measures the background light. And now we've got 16 swings and the micro bit is timing this whole period. Um, plus it's counting all of the times that it sees the, the light beam. So it counts the number of light light beam crossings that it sees. And there's the final number, two, oh, 2003, so 2003 milliseconds. Okay, so I've got a couple of figures. Now we can do the sums on it. So uh, that last run was 
2.003 seconds. So I can now um, work out this formula. So the L is one meter in my case. So I made the pendulum one, one meter. So now if we do um, two pi divided by 2.003, and square that, we get 9.84. And another run, I had 2.001. Um, so we've got 2 pi divided by 2.001 square that and that gives us 9.86 newtons per kilogram um, so the actual value if you look it up on the internet is 9.81 um, so I'm quite pleased with that the, these numbers are quite close to 9.81 so um, so we've just measured the force of gravity using the micro bit. Let me just show you my pendulum program that's loaded into that micro bit. So uh, a couple of interesting things in here. I'm looking at the light level here. So the uh, light level is measured by um, one of the LEDs on, on the display. And uh, so that's how the micro bit knows that it's past the, the torch light, that's gone through the light beam. Um, because I take this background level here, and then in the loop down here, I'm, I'm reading the light level again, and I'm comparing the light level with the background level. So this, is, this piece of code here is the piece that runs when the light beam is broken as the micro bit swings back and forth. Uh, the other useful thing that I'm measuring here is time. So you'll see here I've got this thing called running time. So running time is the number of milliseconds since the micro bit was last started. So, um, so the first time the light is seen in the loop here, what happens is I note the, the running time. So that becomes my time zero, if you like. And then when we, when we finally drop out of the loop at the bottom, I set end time to the to the running time. So basically, the difference between the uh, the difference between the running time at the beginning and the running time at the end is the total time that the micro bit has been swinging backwards and forwards through the light beam. So to uh, to improve the measurement, uh, the precision of the period measurement, what I'm doing is I'm actually measuring a whole load of um, a whole load of swings rather than just one swing. So you'll see I've got this thing called zero crossings here, and what I mean by that is um, zero is when the micro bit is at the bottom of its swing. So um, here I'm going to measure 16 times that the micro bit gets to the bottom of the swing and I keep that in this variable count here so every time I spot the light beam and I run this piece of code here I actually add one to the count so that means that it's gone through the light beam another time which means that at the end all I have to do is uh, to, to work out the period of one oscillation of the pendulum, all I have to do is divide the entire elapsed time of the experiment um, by the number of cycles and the and the cycles is, um, well you see up here, cycles is set to zero crossings divided by two. So that's, so, so a cycle is the time it takes the micro bit to get, for example, all the way from the right hand side back to the right hand side again. So it's gone one complete cycle, swung right to the left and 
and back to the right hand side again. That's one cycle. So that's basically how this program works. We just wait for button A and then we do 16 counts going around this loop and at the end we then divide the total elapsed time by uh, by the number of cycles which is zero crossings divided by two so that's eight so the, the entire elapsed time divided by eight and then as you've seen in the video um, it actually shows that number of milliseconds on the display which is how we get the figure that we're going to use for our calculation so that's how I calculated the gravitational constant G with my micro bit. A link to the program code is in the notes below. If you're interested in seeing me use the micro bit for experiments, please consider subscribing to my channel and please give me your comments below.